Right, 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 right. Let's see if we're live. Anyone here? Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully I should be helping you out in your Amazon businesses. If you are, drop your comments down below. I do this every week. Although next week I'm not doing it because I'm in Miami Sellers Conference. So let's see if we're live. If you're here and you can hear me, drop a comment down below. So I'm going to just check that I'm actually live because otherwise it's going to be Tom talking to himself for a while, which obviously is going to be very embarrassing. Uh, where were you? Like Tom just talked to himself for an hour. So I can see I'm live on YouTube. Whoa, check that out. We're live on YouTube. If you're here, JGL02, JGL02 has said hi. Although it's not come through on my app yet. So I can see you on the... Ah, there you go. I can see you. Hey, JGL02. JG... Oh, my God. JGL02. How are you? How are you getting on? A couple of other people have joined. What about... Let's have a quick look on Facebook. Are we live on Facebook? I think we are. Woohoo. Look at that. Tom's live on the Facebook. I do love having a DSLR camera. The quality is just so good. Like it's so, so good, if you want to know. I was going to do my hair. It's fine. Right. Uh, what are we going through today? Obviously, inventory fees, uh, inventory placement fees have now started to take an effect. Hashtag excited not. Um, also seen a lot like... I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but also seen comments from, I think it's from the CEO of Three Colts talking about Larry's A2X and the way that does inventory placements and how that might be against Amazon's terms of service because you're not supposed to do it that way. We don't know. I'll, I'll share a bit about that as well. What else have we seen? Uh, obviously, low inventory fees coming up as well. That's going to be fun. I know. Hashtag excited. Amazon's full of fun at the moment, isn't it? Mario. Hey, mate. Luigi. Absolutely brilliant. What a great name. Hey, mate. How are you? Good. Dimitri says, hey. And guess what? Music and Zen and Nature has joined from the Philippines. Hey, from the Philippines. Guys, if you've got questions, drop them down below. I will help you out. One second. Mexico City is beautiful right now. It is going to be hitting 28, 30 degrees C. That's like 85 Fahrenheit for all the Americans out there. And it's nice, low humidity. But my God, it does get hot in my apartment, which is full of windows. So I'm like, <sighs> so yeah, definitely. Right, JGL02 has popped up. Good, thank you. Caught the first part of the podcast you uploaded the other day. Roma was talking about some madness times. Yeah. So if you want to know, I'm off to uh, Miami Sellers Conference on uh this friday i fly out on friday and i come back on monday so there will be no live next week just be mindful so get your questions in now ask them now and we did like a like a recording of like talking about miami service conference from last year or, uh, and what that was like it was really good i didn't speak this year i'm speaking so it's great i think i'm the only english person speaking so like woohoo maybe the first english person i don't really know that'd be interesting so uh obviously really really happy with that and um and we just kind of talked about it. And what was interesting is when we met last year, like after Miami Sellers Conference, was Roma had basically like lost his account, lost his books, and he was in like a bad, bad place. And like, obviously, I was too. Like, I closed down my UK account, but I interviewed him about him like losing his Amazon account, what happened. And like, it was like literally at the pinnacle. And he was like, you caught me at the worst time. So. Uh, I, I heard all of that and I, I interviewed him. So if you, if you don't know, do check out that interview with Roma. Like, account got shut down about a year ago. And it was a bit like, it was a bit raw. So it was like, oh my God, this is like crazy. So do check that out. That was quite interesting. But yeah, it was a madness. And hey, like, I, just talking about madness, let's just talk about madness quickly. So um, a friend of mine and I were talking and we were talking about how um, there were problems with... Um, she say like, are you worried about Amazon, new fees coming in, all this stuff? And the one thing I said to him was, Amazon has always got harder and harder, more and more madness over time. But what's really interesting is we're now making more money than we ever have. So the opportunity is still there, but you've got to get good at it. And it is easier to make it if you know what you're doing. To start is really easy, but your problem comes is that anyone can do it. That's the problem. So the entry level stuff is really easy to do. There's not much money in that. But if you get more advanced, if you learn skill sets, build systems, you are going to be in a good place. And by the way, like those systems transfer from an Amazon business to any other business that you may do later on in life, whether that be like Walmart, for example, whether you want to start on TikTok, learning how to sell, manage platforms, sell on platforms, do logistics, manage buying, selling stock can be game changing. So do not think about this as just Amazon. Think about this as I'm building skills which will help me on Amazon and in the next business that I create. Because I promise you, this probably won't be the last one. 
That's the way it works. Uh, business is always changing. So let's jump through. Mario says, where are you investing the profits cash flow generated by your business apart from reinvesting the business, property, and stock? Well, I do have property, if you want to know. Um, I do like to travel, so I do travel a lot. I, I spend a lot on points. Um, also, as well, I do reinvest in stock. Um, I won't lie, like when we closed down the UK business, we had a lot of stock we wanted to clear down, and that actually came into a loss, as in like we had some bad deals. You know, it's like what you generally tend to find in any business is you'll have some good deals and you'll have some bad deals, and that always happens. And what you tend to find is that unless you're, if you're not m buying good deals to make big profits and then cover up some of the bad deals, then you make okay profits and you're quite happy with it. But if you're not constantly buying, you just get left with a bad deal. So those bad deals cost us money. So I, I returned some money back into that business, but the Amazon US UK business has been profitable. So I'm really happy with that. And I've made an insane amount of like money on points and travel and etc. cetera. Um, but that's it really. Like, um, yeah, we have great fun. Like, I won't go into exactly how much I make, but let's just say my lifestyle ain't bad. Let's put it that way. Um, and it's all dependent on what you want. Like, uh, you know, I invest in certain other areas, uh, should say outside of Amazon, because I do, but I was always passive. So I definitely have property as well. Let's kind of go through. What's the best courier service at FBM, Amazon UK, tired of missing goods, tanking prices? Oh, I don't know that answer. Like, I would probably put it in the group, post in the group. I don't know the exact answer. And the reason why I don't know the exact answer is A, we do FBA, not FBM. And B, there's going to be a balance between best, like obviously having come from the UK, if you're going to use someone like, who are they called? Who are the guys who are like, the memes are about them, like uh, they never even bothered delivering? Uh, not Yodel? Could be not Yodel. It's someone else. You know, they're really bad. I remember them. They're really, really bad. So, like, um, but everyone used to use them because they were dirt cheap. So just be mindful of that. Like, if you've got insurance, using dirt cheap is fine because they don't get the return. Fantastic. But I think, like, the idea is this. It's not like, okay, let me change the analogy. Instead of talking about FBM and couriers, let's talk about prep centers. I know too many prep centers whereby they are the cheapest and their customers have been, like, screwed like messed up they have lost we have like they have lost money uh, we used to go with a prep center in the uk called fast pack not fast track fast pack fba uh, i think we were out of pocket five to eight thousand pounds when they went basically bankrupt um so in stock overdue deliveries things like problems so like even like paying for cheap uh like or like paying for cheap isn't the answer, getting the, the right services if you want to So uh, there is a balance, that's what I say. So Ravi, I hope that, like, I would put it in the group. I don't know the answer. I'm sorry, I'm, you're like, hey Tom, I came to the answer, I didn't give it to you. Sorry, hope that makes sense. JGL02, I ended up purchasing your top supplier sheet the other day. Really interesting, great value, thanks to you. How do you recommend best learning new suppliers that found, found that beginning step most difficult? Okay, great question. So if anyone wants to know, we, um, we basically have like our free giveaway, top 100 suppliers. You can basically just go onto the website and, and get hold of it. Uh, you'll see I post them around the place a lot. Um, but number two is once you get that, you'll be offered the, the top 500 suppliers. So these are the top 500 most profitable suppliers or number of suppliers that give us the best, most number of deals in the UK and USA as from my own business and from uh, our lead service. So we just look at the analytics on them. So it's literally like this supplier had 926 deals, that's number one. This supplier had 894 deals, cool, that's supplier number two, and they're listed like that. So um, now, if you have this, what do I recommend? Okay, so this is really useful, but I think you need to combine it with something else. You need to define it, define it with a niche. So when you get top suppliers, you need to define it with a niche category of brand. For example, if you're doing sneakers and you like the brand Nike. So then I would use the supplier list to say which suppliers had sell Nike. And so therefore, if I just start sourcing this brand in those suppliers, I'll probably find deals. That's the way to look at it. Why? Because the suppliers themselves are so big, it'll probably take you a year to analyze all of them. And then even by that point, they change their prices every one or two weeks. So it's not going to be, you're not going to be able to get through them all. So 
find a brand or find a category. In the category, you find some brands. Uh, if you're wondering about how do I find brands, simplistic answer is go look at what other people are selling, other OA sellers, you know, between like 25 and 200 sales uh, reviews. What are they selling on the brands? And the more sellers you find on those brands, the more like safe they are, should we say? You're not going to get an IP complaint. And then also number two is the fact that there are deals out there because all of these other sellers have found them. Now your job is just to find, like, they're the brands, which are the suppliers which do it. And so they're the, like, use those top 100 suppliers, that will help you out. And then finally, um, continue to build that brand and supplier list. And then what you really want to do is get like voucher codes, discount, discount cards, uh, cashback websites, cashback credit cards, layering on the discounts, and this is all just going to help improve your margin. But you know where to buy, when, and then also then on top of that, you want to layer on like when to buy. For example, we talk about replenishable items. Some items are going to be replenishable every single week. Fantastic. Majority not. Most replenishables are going to be replenishable at certain times of the year because the very nature of the products, they will become replenishable at those times. For example, things like stationery. Obviously, back to school is going to be a great time for it. Maybe Christmas. Um, you, if you're doing, like, I don't know, toys and games, Christmas is going to be a great time. So certain brands, certain categories have times of year when products come really good in supply. You want to make sure you get them all down so that when you come back around next year or next season, you can then come back and buy it. That's what you're really looking for, replenishables. Hope that makes sense. Right. Tom needs to drink water because his coffee is way too hot. And then we'll jump on to the next one. So, one second. Mm. JGL02. Sorry, someone's drilling outside. And I would close the door, but... My God, it is hot. It is like 86 degrees C in here. Oh, well, Fahrenheit, 86 Fahrenheit. It's 86 degrees C. I am bubbling. Right. Um, yeah. So I interview, um, I've forgotten his name, Jimmy. Ah, I've forgotten his name. Jimmy, who does the replens model. Now, he said, and I, I do fully agree, if you go after only the, um, if you go only after the offers, they're not replenishable. And so what you should really be looking at is, yes, do look at the offers, but also try and look at full price items. That'd be good. Oh, the police are after me. Mexico City police. Ooh, come with the guns. Um, so do look at full, full price items. Hope that makes sense. Mario says, do you invest in property and stocks via a company or personal proper, properly tax benefits and doing it via a company, right? Yeah, like, you, okay, so let's put it, I will kind of let you into some kind of insights. So I invest in property personally, and then I do stuff with companies as well. But like I have UK companies, I have US companies, I have UK accountants, I have US accountants, I have three accountancy companies who we use, and I have a global tax advisor as well because obviously I travel a lot, so that has an impact, and how we move money between companies has an impact. It gets really complicated and costly. I will not lie. I probably spend more on accountancies per year than a lot of Amazon sellers will probably do in like revenue per month. So I'm not going to say I'm that big, but like it does cost money. So um, it gets complex. So I think that's the important thing. But um, it's beneficial. But again, play the long games. That's what I think about. Yeah, he said EV. Uh, they, they changed the name, didn't they? The UK, the UK sellers. So it's like, oh, right, let's go through. Um, Vibes 90. Any tips on trying to sell huge items via um, FBM? Well, I'm guessing you're talking about things like if you talk about the old days when people were selling pools or they were telling... Um, or they were shipping like other items. I think to be honest with you, it's just pricing. That's it. You're always looking for like, what's the cheapest price you can get it with evidence of delivery because Amazon need to know that. So um, that's the only thing I can really suggest. I'm not hot on it. Like you probably want to like ask about FBM shipping big items. Um, you, I don't know how big you're looking like. I know some people who sold companies whereby they used to do, what are they doing? Like jacuzzis, hot tubs. They used to do private delivery saunas. They were drop shipping saunas, which I thought was really cool. Uh, I think they sold it three million. I was like, wow. Um, but yeah, like these things happen. Like, but again, you're getting very specialist, and we just do FBA, not FBM. So I'm not the best. Sorry. I know you're like, God damn it, Tom. I came to get some answers. Do you mind? Sorry. Right. I'm considering selling fast-moving grocery in the UK. What are the min minimum date and packaging requirements, please? Okay. My understanding is, I think you need. I think for food, I think it's 12 months. Don't quote me. It could be 12 months minimum. Um, packaging requirements, obviously, it's got to have all the UK labeling on it. The only other thing, that, Ravi, the only thing I would probably say for you, uh, it looks like you might, you might be trying to do it by FBM because you're asking that FBM question previously. The only other thing which I'd probably say for you is the new inventory, low inventory fees, they could be causing you, could cause you problems. 
So let's be very crystal clear. Like This is kind of for everyone in regards to low inventory fees. What happens? Once a week, I think it's Sunday, don't quote me, end of the week, once a week, Amazon basically do uh, an, like, they look at all your stock and they basically record you how fast your stock is selling. If you want to know, go to Amazon Seller Central, go to inventory, go to um, FBA inventory. Not all inventory, but FBA inventory is a bit further down. Um, and then you need to go to options and turn on historical um, days in supply by ASIN. It's parent ASIN. That will show you the days in supply. Now, this is the number which by Amazon will measure your how 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 low your inventory is and if you'll get fees. So one of the big problems around grocery is it's generally low value, fast moving, you know, fast moving, and the profit per item is quite low. So if you are not holding enough stock in FBA, you are going to hit by low, uh, she say, low inventory placement, low inventory fees. Now in the US, if you are below 14 days worth of inventory, which by the way, for some items selling really fast, is actually is quite like, that's a lot of stock you've got to hold to get more than 14 days worth of inventory, is you're gonna be hit by like nearly 90 cents worth of fees. So therefore, you might only be making 80 cents on the product because it's quite low value, you're turning it over, and then you're getting now low inventory fees, it's gonna really mess you up. So you've really got to get on top of that now, one kind of like, I don't know if it's a hack, it's something I talked to a friend about and said, look, why don't we every Sunday or Monday look at what that number is? And if the number, i.e. historical days in supply, if the historical days in supply is low, then what we might do is put the repricer to hover the buy our price above the buy box to slow down the rate of sales. And so therefore, slowing down our velocity and increasing the historical days in supply so we do not hit by fee increases, which can be anything up to 90 cents for small items. So just be mindful, it can cause you real problems. But I think you really need to understand that. And that's, if you wanna know, the new uh, low inventory fees are gonna really hit low value items and particularly fast moving ones are gonna be a big, big, big problem. So I hope that makes sense. Who do I follow in the Amazon reselling space on YouTube and Twitter? Sirs offers amazing value. I really like Chris Grant, Flips and Miles, all out Amazon fields of profit. Yeah, I think it's really good. So I probably don't follow too much. I think we ask very specific questions. Okay, it's a good question, but I'm gonna kind of give you a different perspective. I think they all add a lot of value and I have communicated and interviewed all of them on my channel. I really do like them. But what I would probably say is the majority of the content they share on YouTube will be more of the entry level stuff. And it's not and it's and it's more about reach, should we say. Now I say this because I'm trying to get into personal development quite considerably. And right now what I realize is that watching YouTube videos is great, but even as a creator, I know that the the content we create on YouTube is predominantly based on uh, or should we say educational with a, an element of entertainment. Because if it was purely ent educational with no entertainment, it would not do well. And so therefore my channel would decline. So I'm incentivized because obviously I do get paid by YouTube and also as well my company is uses it as a marketing channel to create entertainment content. Now, when someone asks me the question, hey Tom, I'm thinking about signing up for your course, your program, like you share so much on YouTube, like what more can I learn? I'm like, I don't think you understand the real value I can't share on YouTube because like the algorithm just does not like it because it's like, how do you technically do P and L's for example? How do you do balance sheets? Those things are like super boring, but so important. For example, if I tell you another one that we shared recently uh, or that we're, we're releasing in the VA Acceler Academy is what's the exact step-by-step -step process we do reorders? Like step one, step two, step three, step four. And it's not short, it's like all the T's and crossing the I's and dotting the things. It's super boring, but if you do it, I can shave, like when we did it this way, I managed to get my purchasing managers to go from, I think it was like 10 ASINs per hour analyzed for reordering, down to one ASIN in, it was like one ASIN for seven minutes initially, down to uh, one ASIN in 26 seconds. So I managed to increase the speed at which we can reanalyze and reorder products by like, I don't know, a factor of 10? That's incredible but that would not make for a good YouTube video. So therefore I would not release it because it doesn't make sense.
So I hope that, that makes sense. But um, I do follow them. I, Twitter, I think, is really quite useful. Um, I'd look at that as well. Um, but I think it, you really want to get exposure to people. You want to get around them, have conversations. So you know, I have a lot of private conversations. Again, that's communities, which are really good and useful. So you know, one-to-ones, that's really helpful. Um, right, JGL2, that's great. Thanks, Tom, no problem. Joe, hey, Joe, do you do PL? How have you made arbitrage sustainable all this time? Great work and content. Thank you, Joe, I love it. Do I do PL? No, I don't. Um, I'll explain why. Let me just inhale some coffee. <gasps> Tom's talking so much. Man needs coffee. By the way, it's just black. I don't know if you can you see that. Eh, no, oh, you can just see it there. Yeah, it's black. It's just black coffee. Nothing's happening. Right. So let's do it this way. Okay. To most people who sell on Amazon, Amazon is all the same, but it is not. Private label is about finding a product, working with manufacturers, and doing marketing and sales, and understanding how to create listings and get them ranking. Reselling game is very different. It's taking existing brands with listings already that are selling and ranking and finding them for the best price and managing the supply chain efficiently and effectively to ensure the profitability. To everyone else, it just looks like Amazon is like, oh, I'm selling on Amazon, I'll, I'll do some private label. I hear it too many times from too many sellers. I'll do, I want to do some RA, then OA, then I'm going to do wholesale, then I'm going to do some private label. I'm like, man, like, you're not even doing a million yet. Just do one model. Like you can actually do RA to one million dollars a year in sales, and I cannot stress that enough. And what all you do is by going from RA to OA to wholesale to private label is you just have to learn so much more, and you do not become expert in anything. And if anything, if you want to understand, think about it like a skilled trade. Let's say, for example, you're a, a builder. You know, you could do like the you know, the concrete, the plumbing, or the woodwork, for example. Um, Someone who has been doing woodwork for like a year can probably make a decent cabinet, for example, but they are not going to build an amazing work of art. That takes like decades. And the difference between how much you get paid for your hours worked, the work of art is going to be insanely more valuable, maybe in the millions, whereas the guy who makes a decent you know, filing cabinet or a chair ain't going to get paid very much. And it's because of your skill set developed over time. So the more you diversify, the less you develop your skill set. And so therefore, the less you're ultimately going to get paid. Now, this is not to say that you should not do private label. Uh, I think private label is great. It has a really great place. I personally don't do it because I feel that it's a different skill set and I don't want to develop that. But I really like trade. And I love trade uh, because it's older than money itself. And what we do on Amazon in reselling, arbitrage is just trade. And I love that. So. Do I do private label? I feel like I'm going on a rant. Sorry, guys. Um, arbitrage is wholesale, OA, RA is just the same stuff. It's just different way you source. Um, that's it, and it's just a mindset shift. So yes, we do some wholesale now. Yes, we've done OA. We've probably done eight figures in OA. And while I think, while well, you might be like, oh my god, how are you able to do it? Go look at Saros in the US. He did 10 million in one year in OA. And by the way, he did it in just sneakers. So like, that's not even like, that's just one subcategory. That's one, not even one category, it's one subcategory of a marketplace. So like, I think our mindset is too small. Hope that makes sense. Joe, let me know. Uh, Tom, hey Tom, thanks for hosting this. What are your thoughts about starting Amazon OA in the UK? I think you're okay. Look, I'll say this, I'll be really honest. If you're gonna do OA in the UK, I think you're absolutely fine, okay. If you're going to do OA in the UK, I think you'll be absolutely fine. Just be mindful that the moment you go to the VAT registered registration, which is about 85,000, it becomes a lot harder. You now have about a 16% tax you have to pay additional on your income, and then also you have increased administrative burden. So uh, you need software, additional software for that, and probably better accountancy. So there is increased costs, increased administration, and increased taxation. But if you want to get started, OA in the UK is great. It's really easy. Just focus on learning your niche. Learn on something whereby you have a competitive advantage and you're not just generally looking for any old low-hanging fruit. You've got to figure out what works for you that isn't other people do not understand. Do understand that business at the end of the day is just information ar like uh, arbitrage or information advantage. You have or you know something that other people do not know. And so by taking advantage of that information, you can therefore, should we say, uh, make money. For example, if I know I can go to Boots and I can buy products and I don't have to get past their checkouts, then I can get the products that no one else can buy. So therefore, I'm going to be able to take a competitive advantage. But if everyone else can do it, then there is no advantage and my business will not last. So build that advantage. That is all I will say. Hope that makes sense, Graham. Tom's like running well behind. I need to answer some questions. Graham, can you please explain how Amazon sellers distinguish themselves from the competition by other than competing with the price? 
Like in trade, that's it. It's price. It's the price you're buying it at. By the way, selling on Amazon is amazing. Like Amazon do everything, and we just have to find one factor price. So all you've got to do is find the cheapest product, which can be found by using uh, number one, cheap suppliers, number two, gift card cards, uh, credit cards, overdrafts, so that's going to help you. But think about it from like, let's say for example, I run a company called Fast Track FBA. In Fast Track FBA, not only do I have to run all the operations, which you would have to do in Amazon, I also have to go out and find customers. I have to advertise them. I have to do all the payment processing. Um, I have to deal with a lot of kind of functional parts that it's just a lot of hassle. So I think for you is just be mindful that yes, it's annoying, but actually it makes it a lot easier. And business is inherently hard and a lot of work. Um, I spend a lot more time on Fast Track FBA than I do on my Amazon business. And we do a lot more revenue in our Amazon business by multiples. So I share that with you now. Right, let's go through. Ravi, are low inventory fees applicable in the UK? I'm not sure. If not, they're gonna come to the UK. I promise you that. Like everything comes, everything comes to the UK eventually. They just do it on the US. Oh my God. I love this question. Mario says, can you please share what percentage of your sales came from what category when you're selling in the UK? Very hard to niche down the UK of only a few categories as well. I don't think so. Um, number one, I don't remember. I don't remember. We were spending 100,000 a week, my team, buying anything and everything. And by the way, we did not have a competitive niche. And so therefore, we were really easy to copy. And we were being copied. And I had increased administrative costs. And I had increased uh, taxation. And it was a lot of work. So the answer is, is I don't remember. Um, but also number two, it, uh, that was back then, that was a year and a bit ago. I would really recommend you need to find what works for you. So um, I appreciate it's hard to niche down, but it's hard for you, it's hard for everyone else. And Amazon UK is big. Like it's the third, third biggest marketplace in the world, I think, don't quote me. Um, it's near there, like top five at least. So you've got to figure out yourself. Um, look at other sellers, see what they're doing and how they're focusing on their brands and the categories. That'll help you as well. Storefront stalking. Let's go through. Uh, sorry, another question, please. Are you able to suggest the average net profit margin on Amazon USK? So put it this way. If you are over that registered and you're achieving a 10% net profit margin, I'd say you're doing well. Like, I'd be like, cool. Um, I think when we were doing well, we were doing seven. And because I probably wasn't running as tight as I should have done, it went down to five. And then we were like, this year was going to start to come out. It's not this year, the year last year. We were starting to go lower than that. And I was like, I'm not going to continue this game because we were just losing margin and I could just see where it's going. So I was like, I had Amazon debt going up and I had margin going down. I was like, this doesn't look very good. So therefore, like, that's it. But I would say like, if you are VAT registered in the UK doing 10%, you're doing well. In the US, 15% would be like, well done, you're doing a good job. Um, there are people who will beat this, of course, um, but you know, there are always gonna be outliers and there will be people saying to me like, hey, like, Tom's talking crap, you should be making more. Yeah, of course, you should be making more. You should be making more money at all times, which is focusing, not kind of doing everything. So if you can do 10%, fantastic, but I think we were doing seven at when we are in the good place. Um, but again, like I probably wouldn't say my controls are in the best place. So I'm not sitting here saying I'm a guru or I'm an expert. If anything, I'm a failure because I shut my business down. I hope that makes sense. Right, vibes. Is shadow banning real? My account has been a bit weird last couple of months. When you say weird, what do you mean? And shadow banning, no, no, not that I'm aware of. Like, no. By the way, what does weird mean? I'd like to know that. That's good. Let's go and jump through. Mario, top three business book recommendations. Could you be specific as last time you just told me to read everything? Yeah, read everything. Okay, so I'll give you, let's give you three, and then uh, I will tell you what I'm doing, which might help you as well. Because it recently changed, as of my coaching session last night with my coach, he's not an Amazon seller or anything to do with e-commerce, so don't worry. So um, three specific books that are going to help you out. Um, I think number one, let's do some, it's not really business, but it is mindset. Um, Tony Robbins, Unleash the Giant Within, I think it is. I do have it on my Kindle. Just want to make sure I get the name right. Awaken the Giant Within, get it right. I think that's really powerful. I listened to that this weekend seven times in one weekend. I think it's really good to do that. It's going to help you visualize where you want to be and get there. That's so, so important. Number two, if you're going to build a business with teams, traction, absolutely love that that is like building systems and processes is game changing and i always look at that that's that's fundamental um and then what's the third business book oh my god because i always deal with teams so i'm always like managing people i think the third one would probably be looking at something like maybe like the e-myth 
uh, something around processes, like how to document what you're doing. And the reason I say that is maybe you don't have staff, but if you just figure out how to do things better, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to sharpen the ax at all times so that what you do is better. Like, um, uh, like for example, like I use this software here. It's like not perfect. I'm using the free version because like I don't really see the value in paying for it anymore. But it has like this nice little chat window here, which I really like. And I like I could use Streamyard, but this is here, and I really like that. And I and I just think it's a better application. So I'm like I'm improving my online presence by using this application that I really like. Um, so again, refining the axe and the e-myth helped me out. So they're the three books I'd say. Uh, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within, Traction, and uh, the e-myth. I do have loads. Like, I could probably get it in my Kindle. I kind of should, but mine are all a bit like, I got $100 million, How to Be a Great Boss, four, four Disciplines of Execution, Get a Grip, The Road Less Stupid, I love if you're building biz biz big businesses, Tools of the Titans, The Amalmanek of Naval Ravikant, love that. Uh, that's a bit mind-blowing stuff, um, but very high level, very high level. Successful Business by G Keith Cunningham, Rocket Fuel, The EOS Life, I like that. Enemy of the Ego, I've got a lot of like expert secrets. Profit First is okay. Like I think Profit First is good, but it's not that good for, a, it's okay for e-commerce. I prefer other stuff. Um, start with Why, The Magic of Thinking Big, I love that. So if you wanna know what I'm doing, I'm gonna get Blinkist and I'm gonna start listening to all of the book summaries on Thought. I'll just go through them, and if I like them, then I'll jump through into the book and buy it properly. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do. Blinkist, I think if you pay for the year, is about $45 per year. So that's the option that I'm looking at, rather than going through each individual book. But I'm doing Audible ra rather than Kindle, um, because I can just do it at all times, and then I can immerse myself, so I like that. Hope that makes sense, Mario. Joe says, very useful, thanks Tom, no problem. Joe's like, do you know what Tom does? All he does, he comes onto YouTube and he complains about not working on private label or something like that. Like, da 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 I hope you don't feel like that way. It's just me having a, a laugh at myself. Um, but yeah, I like, it's my perspective. And by the way, it's just how the way I see, not as right or wrong. That threshold is increasing to 90K from April. I know, 5K extra. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Um, but I would just be mindful uh, in the world of reselling, 5K is like a rounding error. So it's like, ah, so I hope that makes sense. So yeah, let me know if you've got questions, guys. Drop them down below. I've got another 10 minutes, um, and then I will drop off. I have a call today with a financing company. We're trying to get more, uh, more money for our Amazon business because we were struggling to spend money. Then I challenged my team to spend some more money, and they went out and spent, it was like nearly 12 grand. It was like 11,200, 300 each per VA in one week for multiple weeks. And I was like, thanks. So now like, it's a good problem. It's a really, really good problem, but I'm really happy that. So I hope that makes sense. So Mario says, even by most people's standards, you are very successful. Do you still pay for coaching mentors and business owners more successful yourself? If so, how did you find them? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, like, and it's really funny because while you call me successful, obviously it's all about relative, relativity. So if, if I look at other people who are way ahead of me, for example, if I look at like you know, Amazon Lit, for example, or like Saros, who did 10 million in one year, I'd be like, man, I only did like 3.4 million in one year. That's like, like nothing. Um, but it's all, it's, again, like you could play that game forever. And when you are the world's richest man, you could always compare yourself to the world's happiest man, for example. And like you will never win. So hence comparing doesn't work. And I know that. And again, I still have those fallacies or those problems and I'm trying to manage them. So um, do I still pay for coaching and mentoring? Yes, 100%. I've been doing Tony Robbins coaching for four years and I've done, I'm on my fifth year now. Um, I do them because while they don't specifically help me with Amazon, they do help me with mindset, which I think is really important. And I feel that if my life and my mind are in the right place, then I will be able to figure out the Amazon part. But I don't really expect to be able to find Amazon coaches and mentors that I'd want to keep for five years, I will probably delve in and out of them. And if you probably notice, a lot of my interviews are with people who are Amazon sellers. And just by doing that, I actually network. And it, while it isn't called coaching or mentoring, I have the network to mastermind with and talk with. So I try to make a proactive effort in being very sociable, networking, because the space we operate in is quite new, 15 years it's been around in. But 
so that is very specific skills I'm trying to learn from certain people who are ahead of me. But in regards to business advice in general and life advice, I pay for Tony Robbins, that works. Um, that's not cheap, it's about $10,000 a, a year. I was about to say a month, it's not that much. Um, so I've done that for a couple of years now. Um, and then on top of that is, um, but what I do, the whole equation I think about is that I'm learning about skills of business. I'm not learning about purely skills of Amazon. So therefore, uh, I will apply the business skills in the Amazon context, but I also want to know about the wider business because I appreciate I may not do Amazon forever, but we'll see how it goes. So that's my thing. So um, yeah, definitely level yourself up, but don't compare. That's my advice. How does that help make sense, Mario? JGL02, how do you listen to the audiobooks? Do you just have it on throughout the day or at specific times, or do you find it hard to focus on books? Okay, so uh, I will be really like, you're gonna laugh, really laugh. Right, let's get very specific. When I'm working here at the computer, I cannot listen to audiobooks at all. When I'm trying to focus, I will probably listen to classical music right now. And the reason why I listen to classical music, me and Beto Bar, Bach, that's it. Me and Bach are like best friends right now. And the reason why I listen to that is because two things. Number one, there is scientific research that says that it can really help you in your, uh, in your mindset and how it works. But number two, when I don't have anything playing, I realize I start getting involved in my head and it slows me down because I start having other questions. But if I have some music on in the background which has no vocals, it really helps out. And so classical is something that uh, I'm just listening to right now, that works. Now, number two is when I'm doing other stuff like cooking food, I'm really trying to get my diet on point, or maybe like showering, uh, like I literally just put my audiobooks on my phone and you know they're on the phone, Kindle, and just click play. And, or if I'm going for a walk, I've specifically uh, bought these. These are like some, like they're actually pretty cheap. They're like, I think they're 30 quid. Um, they just kind of go over your ears like that. And they're like little mini speakers. And the one thing I felt was that I had ear stuff in for too long, so it caused a problem. Like I was in for hours, and these are a lot nicer. They just kind of sit on your ears. They don't cover them so your ears can still breathe. Um, and I can just listen to stuff. So I'll go for walks, or I'll go to the gym, for example. Um, that's really, really helpful. So just, you are, you are that to what you are most exposed to. And if you just expose yourself to people ahead of you, people who are giving you information, you will become that. And I will turn it around and say that if you look at Facebook and YouTube every single day, and I've done this, you, you start exposing yourself to that. And, and what's really interesting is you probably don't feel so great, you probably don't do such a good job. So there, I try to stay away from that, not too big on social, and I try to immerse myself in people with great knowledge. And the one change I've made recently is going away from YouTube. Like I'll still do YouTube specific for Amazon, but I will immerse myself more in books because they are a much more like data rich source of information. Uh, people have taken a lot of time and there is they are well refined, whereas YouTube is kind of like, I create something, go send it out there and see how it does, then I refine and it's got an entertainment value. So books is where I'm really trying to focus on and just trying to immerse myself. And on Kindle, you can listen to it at like 1.5 speed. So I hope that makes sense. Let's go through. Facebook user, hey Facebook user, I have been, let's get back to Amazon. Woohoo, I've been offered 20 grand loan. I will say yes, uh, that's good. It means Amazon loves your business. From Ulen through Amazon, do they have any knowledge or experience of borrowing from them? Is there no interest? There is no interest as to fix amount they charge and then repayment they've agreed via percentage of this person to repayment's done. That's basically exactly the same as Amazon did it. Amazon just did it a slightly different way whereby they added it onto the load and then you paid it back. Um, two things, Amazon lending will no longer exist. It's now closing down. So you will not get Amazon lending. They're doing it through the third party providers. And then, um, so you lend is I think the one that they're doing the most with in the UK. Um, and it's just a, a debt financing structure. Um, if you're going to ask me, it's probably going to be one of the easiest ways to get it because like, they're kind of pre-approved, if that makes sense. So they already know your stats, they know your business, and they're like, cool, we'll offer you this money. Um, but cash lump sums like this aren't the best for reselling businesses. What you really want is what's known as, a, as a, um, like an overdraft facility, an, uh, um, an analysis, or she said an overdraft facility, which gives you the ability to pull and take money as you require. But they're a lot harder to get hold of. So um, you can look at overdraft, cash, uh, uh, like financing, um, but it's a lot harder. So this, fine. Like, if you, if you, I, my advice would probably be like, get yourself to a point where you've got lots of deals, 
cool, go buy the deal, take the loan, buy the deals, and then start paying it down. Um, when we did Amazon UK, we were taking loans out of 300 and I think it's 360,000 pounds, which by the way, the repayments are like, oh my God, they are painful. Imagine one week you're like, yeah, Tom, so the, uh, the disbursement you're expecting this week, yeah, it's 50 grand less because you've got to repay your loan. You're like, oh, I want to cry. So just be mindful of that. But um, do use the loan and they'll probably try to keep offering you. Just be very mindful on it. If you want to see how, there's one video I released probably about a year ago, the downsides of Amazon loans, check that out. I go into real detail of exactly how we, what I learned about structuring and financing big loans, maybe over 100,000 above, uh, and the advice I give to Amazon sellers. So check that one out. Right, I've got one minute. Let's kind of jump through. Ravi, do you feel like Amazon reward hard work? No. I will tell you that because business doesn't reward hard work, unfortunately. I'll tell you why in a minute. In my experience, I went from zero to here in five months, 6,000, and I've been ungating most problems. Okay, I think Amazon rewards smart work as, as business does. If you are smart about what you do, yes, but if you just work hard and not smart, it will not work. But if you've done lots of sales, yeah, and if you've done lots of transactions and you get ungated, fantastic, well done to you. I think you've done a really good job, um, and you'll see that. The more, like, I, I get new sellers, hi, Tom. Um, uh, I've just started selling. Uh, I'm, in, I'm trying to get ungated in, you know, a hundred different brands. Cool. How much have you sold? Oh, I haven't started yet. I'm just getting ungated first. I'm like, I'm get, like, sell some stuff. It doesn't matter. So well done to you, Ravi, for doing that. I think that's really important. People do not understand this. So I think, but well done. You're working smart and hard. Keep up the good work. Love it. JGL02. Really insightful. Definitely going to steal your classical music thing. Ha <laughs> ha. I know, find out what works for you. Love it, really good. Mario, does your accountant add more value than compliance, fil filing accountants and bookkeeping, e.g. how you can grow your profit, sales, which categories, products, things, double down on? Honest answer, no, not at all. Like, I will say that now. Um, but I don't expect them to, that's not their job. Their job is not to tell me how to run my business. Yes, their job is they can give me insights into the way my business is running, but it does not mean that that is what I will do. So insights about how we can grow, definitely, but that's my job. Um, my accountant's job is to make sure compliance is done correctly, that I don't get fined, and it's particularly if you want to talk about in the US, uh, I had a friend who was fined $25,000 for not ticking a box. A box. I was like, like crazy. So. Number one, they do that. Um, and number two, like, and if you, by the way, if you really want to know, in my business, we have uh, admin BAs who do the financial function and bookkeeping to such a high standard that the majority of the time, my accountants have no questions, problems, or queries. My admin BAs already know what they're doing. They've been with me five years. So they even do my personal tax return. They do my personal UK tax return. They do my corporate UK tax returns, they do the UK VAT returns, they can do the US tax returns, like it gets complicated. Um, and what's really interesting is um, they can do that to a really high standard and the, and the accountants, which we pay a lot of money for, are really checking them, but like I'm 100% fine with that because that means that my internal controls are really, really good and that we have good like processes. If my accountants have lots to change, then it means we've got problems internally. But what, the way I see it is that my internal businesses do a good job, my accountants check that for compliance, and so therefore we do not get fired, and if I need to speak to people about financials, then that's good, and then finally, I am then the one who signs off to say, if it's not right, I will get fined. If I give you a really good example um, where they do add value, we had some uh, kind of some interesting conversations around taxation across the UK and USA and how we should structure certain uh, transactions and how we should structure certain like how we should do things and I spoke to my global tax advisor got advice from him and then I took the US part and the UK part and then I sent them to my U the two accountants and I asked them for advice on that and they came back and gave me their feedback and from that we formulated a much more kind of constructive plan and by doing that you know we'll have big impacts upon me over the course of the next you know five, 10, 20 years, but you're paying for advice. And I think the best analogy I can ever give you is the guy who walks around, the, a ship breaks down and a guy walks around saying, um, uh, this guy is, calls in a, an engineer. The engineer walks around for half an hour or an hour and then gets his little hammer out, taps it, and the, you know, the, the ship's engine starts up again. 
and he gives him an invoice for 100,000. And the guy's like, what the fuck? I'm not paying you 100 grand, you were here for an hour. And the guy, and the engineer says, I'm really sorry, I should have itemized it. Time to walk around the boat, you know, looking at the problems, you know, $20. Knowing where to hit the boat to make it work uh, with, for 15 years experience, 999,980, for example. And, it's, and that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the knowledge. You're paying for, if you do this, this will cost you. If you do this, this will not. You can do this, you can't do this. And I think that's a really important distinction in learning in life. Like, I learned it very early on. Surround yourself with good people who know what they're doing because, they're, because there are so many mistakes you can make which will cost you big. Your job is just to figure out the one direction to go, focus all your energy on that, which is called Amazon reselling. That's bloody hard. And then all the other parts, you don't want to worry about. You just go, I pay you good money to solve problems. Please solve it. That's it. So that's the way I kind of look at business and the way I think about it is like, I just have a few directions I need to focus on. That's the skill set I learn. I get exponential returns on. And then from those returns, I pay experts for themselves. Because you can't do everything yourself. You'll never learn it to the standard. You just don't have enough years in your life. You can't, or hours in the day. Nor do you want to. I hope that makes sense. Facebook user says thanks. Ravi says thanks. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe it's time. I have gone on way too much. And I need to inhale some more coffee. Right, I will not see you next week. I'm not here next week. I'm in Miami Sellers Conference. But I do just want to say a big thank you to everyone for joining. And obviously, to say, join me in two weeks' time. That's going to be really helpful. And what well, obviously, I will be here to support you guys with your questions. So do make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever. And obviously, I'll be here to help you out. Anyway, stay safe, people. Hit the like button.